Hello everybody, welcome to Fine Dining with Chef Kelly. Here I am, I'm Chef Kelly, I'm your personal chef. Uh, today we've got three phenomenal dishes for you. We're gonna make a variation on a pureed soup, which is going to be carrot and parsnip. We're going to have steamed halibut, and that's gonna be served with cauliflower and chickpea. And then for dessert, we're gonna have a port wine marinated pear, served with vanilla mascarpone and pistachio sauce. One of the excellent things about being a personal chef is that you need to uh, personalize everything to who it is that you're cooking for. So while we're cooking today, we'll talk a little bit about what we can do differently with these dishes to make sure that you and your team and your family all love everything that you make. Fine dining has been the core of what it is I've wanted to do forever. I found out about Charlie Trotter when I was 14. Now, literally, if I don't think that Trotter would be happy with it, I'm not gonna put it out. My fine dining experience has gone from New York City to Chicago, to Hawaii, to Washington DC, down to Miami, plenty of places in between. Fine dining shows art, it shows finesse, and it shows love. That's what we're here to do together, is to work our magic together. So our vegetable soup here, yes, is a vegetable soup. One of the things about being a personal chef, you need to personalize your food to your people. Uh, today we happen to be cooking for a bunch of vegetarians, um, so we're gonna make this as vegan as possible. If we wanted to make this you know, a little bit more hearty with some protein, uh, some animal form of protein, we'd be adding some chicken stock, we might be adding some, uh, some tuna, that would actually go pretty well. Um, there's ways that you can incorporate more ingredients into this in order to fit a different crowd. But today, since we happen to have a bunch of vegetarians, we're gonna use only vegetables. So we're peeling carrots. For the amount of food that we're gonna make here today, we got about a pound of carrots. You see that I've got a bowl? We're gonna save a lot of these little pieces of carrots. My favorite thing about this dish, to be quite honest, is the way it's gonna look. Um, it's super fun to be able to do this sort of thing. It's super easy once you see how it is that you can do it. But to be quite honest, it's one of those things that uh, people always really gasp over. Uh, they'll be super happy to see that you've got something fancy, something fun. Um, and it doesn't just look like a bowl of pureed soup. It'll look uh, like it has some personality, which is what you really want to do, is bring the personality into your food. All right, we don't need to sweat anything. We don't need to go that extra step because what we want to do is keep all of the flavor in the pot. We do not want to evaporate any moisture. By evaporating moisture, you're evaporating flavor. You can use for salad. You can use for uh, actually a meat substitute. I've had a dish once where I did a roasted uh, parsnip. Um, served it with a bunch of other vegetable garnish and it was extremely hearty. Parsnips are also available all the time, just like carrots are. Parsnips are one of those ingredients you can always rely on, just so long as you know how to utilize it. So parsnips, once we're uh, you know, kind of rendering out any kind of textural issues, are gonna make everything basically sweet. Um, really, you're gonna see that there's more flavor in a cooked steamed parsnip and it's gonna be super sweet. Anytime you ever wanna use a parsnip for a salad, it'd be great, because it's a white ribbon that you could add into your salad. Um, if you're ever doing something like that though, don't expect a whole lot of flavor. Expect a little bit more texture. You'll notice we're not really paying too close attention to our knife cuts. Um, as we said before, the soup is gonna be pureed. So all we really need to do is just make sure it's chopped up. All right. Sweet potato is going to go with the orange carrots. Um, something else you could do to make this a little bit more healthy if you ever had some fresh turmeric. Uh, sometimes we see that at the, at, the, at the grocery stores. You can add some fresh turmeric. Uh, you can also add uh, yellow carrots if you ever run into any of those. Every time I go through a sweet potato using a peeler, I always end up wondering to myself, why aren't I using my knife? Because I'm just fighting with all this weird textural stuff on the outside of the potato. However, every time I use my knife to go and peel a sweet potato, it takes a lot longer and I end up taking a lot of the potato off. And I just say to myself, you know what, you should really just use your, your peeler because it'd be a lot safer and you know, it'd be a lot smoother. 
Okay, so we got a sweet potato, orange sweet potato. It's gonna go in with our orange carrots, all right? So we're making an orange soup. Sweet potato is gonna give it a little bit more texture, uh, a little bit more hardiness, a little bit more nutrition. We have our white parsnips, all right? Gonna add some cauliflower. Um, super cool thing about cauliflower, it's got the same kind of pureed texture as a parsnip. Um, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna clean up the cauliflower into you know bulbs, basically. Uh, we're gonna throw it into the parsnip, we're gonna simmer it, and at the same time, uh, it's gonna get this delicious velvety texture. It's gonna be excellent. So the way that we're gonna clean up this cauliflower, all right, first thing you do, take off all these leaves. All right, get these things out of your way. At the same time, if you cut it right, this will just twist out, all right? So that's the core, all right? You got a couple little pieces in here we're gonna take out. Paring knife, very important. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come right in and take off some of these big pieces of cauliflower, all right? Cauliflower heads here, all right? We're gonna save that for another recipe at another point in time. Uh, still using our, our paring knife. I'm just gonna break our cauliflower down. Now I'm never gonna tell you to add one head of cauliflower or a half a head of cauliflower. That'll never happen, because heads of cauliflower are always different sizes. Um, but what we do have here is a solid, mm, it's a solid cup and a half of, uh, of cauliflower. We got a solid two cups of parsnip, and then about the same ratio with carrots and uh, sweet potatoes. Okay, so we've got our main ingredients for the soup, which are the colored vegetables, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add more base flavor, all right? We got onion, we got shallot, and we got celery, all right? Always add this stuff to everything. No matter what, if you can get some of this in there, you'll always add more flavor. All right, so we got whole stalks of celery. We don't wanna use the whole stalk of celery for the soup, but remember, we're gonna be using some of our scraps for our entree, all right? So, we're gonna get rid of the base. We're gonna clean up our celery a little bit, top and the bottom. Remember I told you, you don't have to worry about how you're cutting your vegetables. Not true here. Um, celery, albeit as ugly as this one is, has a ton of these little ribs in there. There's all these super, really tough fibers on the outside. If you didn't wanna have those in there, you get your peeler and you peel them off. And then it's gonna be soft and delicious. However, we're not gonna do that. Um, but since this is gonna be a blended soup, we can't be chopping in big chunks. So everything has to be really small. So we break up the fibers so when we blend it, no one's ever gonna be able to tell that celery is in there. Pay attention also to how I'm holding my knife and how I'm holding uh, the food as well. Not too sure if you guys can see it out there. Um, always make sure you have a good hold of the knife. All right, hold it in the very kind of, kind of throat. That's what I've always called it. Um, make sure that you're going to control the knife. You can also balance it pretty well. Uh, when you're cutting, always make sure your fingertips are underneath. All right, you might not learn that until you cut a nail off like I did when I was in culinary school. We're going to do the same thing with both our onion and our shallot. We don't need nearly that much. This guy is going in our steam pot. Same thing though with this guy. So you ever wanna get super industrious come uh, Easter time when you're dying eggs? You can make yellow eggs with the onion skins. That's another thing that you use uh, your food scraps for. So we don't need our actual onion skins for the, the recipe that we're gonna be doing later. Uh, but that's one of those things that you could save uh, your food pieces for. We're going to do the same thing with the shallot, all right? We're going to take the top and the bottom off the shallot. We're going to save those. We're going to peel off the outside, and that's going to go into our steam pot, all right? Now, shallots can be pretty pungent. I'm only gonna use half the shallot for the entire recipe. This other half, we're gonna save and we're gonna use for our entree. 
Okay, so we have our vegetables uh, chopped and into our pots that we're gonna steam in, all right? So at this point, this is where you could vary your dish a bit. Remember, we're cooking for vegetarians today, all right? So all we're gonna do is fill this up with water, all right? At the end, we're gonna season it up. It's gonna be having tremendous flavor. Um, if you had a group of barbecue loving, you know, not vegetarians, what you could do is you could fill this up with chicken stock. Um, actually, the cauliflower and the parsnip would be fantastic with some crab. Uh, this one would also be really interesting with uh, some salmon as well. Um, there's a whole bunch of different variations you could do. So, so long as we have this base um, of vegetable flavor, you can go anywhere from that. However, today we're just going to use water. All right, so I go and put together all my soup and I'm all super happy about it and I fill it up with water and I'm looking at it and I'm like, that pot is way too small. So, just gotta make a little adjustment. I'm gonna grab a larger stock pot over here and I'm um, just gonna transfer it out, all right? This is gonna get poured right into the other pot. See, barely enough water to cover. What you really wanna do is have about an inch and a half to two inches of water covering your vegetables. This way, it will reduce enough, everything will cook properly and evenly. You're gonna concentrate flavor on the inside. All right, everything's going on the stove, high heat. Both of our pots on the stove, high heat. Next, we're gonna start seasoning. We're gonna start building another layer of flavor. So we have our seasoning ingredients over here as well, all right? One of the things we're going to season with is garlic. Real quick, give them a quick smash. All right, so we peeled off our garlic. All right, we're going to smash it. We're going to give it a quick chop. We're going to throw it into both of our pots. So we smashed it. We gave it a rough chop. Now it's just going to go right in the pot. All right, so our soup, we got it at a rolling boil now, right? So I wanna bring it down a little bit. I don't wanna boil it so hard, all right? So I'm gonna cut it down to about uh, medium heat. When you can look in the pot here, see this kind of foamy stuff that's happening? Uh, you know what that is? That's actually particles of the food that don't wanna be there anymore. The food is literally trying to push that out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a spoon, we're gonna pull some of this out, all right? These impurities, once we remove them, it's actually gonna help make a clearer soup. The more of that that stays in the water when we blend it, it's gonna be cloudier. Same thing's happening over here in the cauliflower soup. We got some foam starting to come up. Whenever you see foam coming up out of your pot, if it's chicken stock, beef stock, any kind of soup that you're making, any anything, you got foam coming up, you pull it out. That's the food telling you that that doesn't need to be there anymore. As a personal chef, it also kind of depends on where you're actually cooking. I'm super lucky to have really strong high heat right now. Um, sometimes high heat doesn't even get you a boil and you gotta, you know, make adjustments. All right, so we seasoned with garlic. We're gonna season with a couple other main ingredients that I always use everywhere. Number one, white pepper. Tiny little bit. you also notice, I'm sure we haven't added any salt. Now's the time. We're also gonna add some bay leaves, two each. Make sure you get nice big whole bay leaves. Don't be getting any of these little ones that are all kind of shriveled up because we wanna remove the bay leaf before we blend it. I don't want the bay leaf to be in there when we blend it. It's gonna taste, uh, it's gonna taste a little weird. Okay, so we're gonna make a garnish for our soup now, all right? Garnish for our vegetable soup, other vegetables. We got spinach, we got red pepper. We're gonna use some of our chefness to bring out some flavor and to incorporate some more texture as well. Um, with our red pepper, we're gonna do a brunoise cut, all right? Classic French cut. Basically, smallest dice you can do. Okay, so these peppers right here, this is what we're gonna use for garnish, right? Got a ton of pepper here. There's like another dollar's worth of pepper here. So you definitely wanna make sure you're gonna use it. 
This would be great for, I don't know, an omelet dish. Um, you know, possibly some other, uh, you know, kind of pepper soup, something that might be pureed, something that might not need to be so fancy dancy and uh, visually appealing as in a chopped form. Um, what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna take off that. We're gonna take off all the little tops. All right, so this is how we're gonna do our brunoise, all right? Number one, super sharp knife. Number two, be confident. Number three, don't cut yourself. Number four, we're gonna fillet it right out. All right, here we go. You ready? Right underneath. That's all we're doing, right? Yeah, but I didn't get too much off of it right there. So I'm gonna bend the pepper back and I'm gonna go through again. All right, got a little bit more right there I can take off. I'm gonna go through and bend it again. See, all right. Okay, so this is more vegetable scrap that we could use in some other vegetable soup, but we're gonna use it today, of course, in our entree with our bowl of vegetable scraps that we're saving. Now that we have this uh, filleted out and flattened out, we're going to utilize our super sharp knives. We're gonna remember what I said before about keeping your fingers under. We're gonna slice. Don't be pushing anything and don't be pushing down, all right? That's not what you're supposed to be doing. You gotta slice, all right? Use the entire knife. If your knife is nice and sharp, like this one is, you'll do all this stuff and your peppers will stay right there, all right? Still nice and organized. This is one of the ways that we're gonna make sure that we've got a beautiful dice. I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna make the food work for me, all right? I don't need to be dancing around my cutting board trying to move myself so I can chop the food properly. I'm gonna move the food. Just like that, Brunois. Nice and sharp knife. Everything stayed right on the cutting board. Bazinga. We're gonna do that to the rest of our bell pepper here, and that's gonna finalize our garnish for our soup. All right, so we're gonna load up our vegetable brunoise into a little glass bowl. I'm gonna get the rest of these peppers chopped up for us here, and then we're gonna move on to finalizing our vegetable garnish for our vegetable soup. All right, so this is the basic ingredients for our vegetable garnish, all right? Uh, all we're really gonna do is saute some spinach and we're gonna add some flavor to the spinach. That's it. Um, peel the garlic clove, gonna give it a smash. Gonna give it a quick little chop. Got a saute pan back here I put on a medium heat. A Little bit of olive oil. Garlic is going in. We don't want to be going too fast with the heat. We got a good medium low heat here. We don't really have a whole lot of sizzle in there. You want to gently warm the garlic. If it's too hot, garlic is going to get brown on the outside really fast and it's going to be raw and gross on the inside. No bueno. In our spinach, we're going to put a little salt, a little pepper. If you're a well-seasoned home cook, you're gonna wanna take that saute pan, start shaking it around. Start acting like a saute cook, tossing everything around. Don't do that. Let it sit. You hear that sizzle? That's a good thing. That means nothing's burning. That means it's developing flavor. You wanna let it sit. You don't wanna mess with it. Well, now we wait, all right? So you'll notice we got some lids on the soup. I'll tell you what rule I'm breaking right now is that all through culinary school and all throughout my entire history as a chef, um, whenever I was working for somebody, they always told me don't cover anything if it's white. No potatoes, no cauliflower, no parsnips, no any other vegetable that's white. They always say don't cover it. We don't want to let steam out. All this stuff coming out, that's flavor. We want to keep it all in. You'll see now that the spinach has started to decrease in volume. We've started to evaporate some moisture. We're gonna start stirring it around a little bit. Do not take the saute pan off the heat. Leave it there. The second you take off the saute pan and you start tossing everything around, you incorporate air and you're gonna change the cooking temperature. No good. Check out this garlic back here. Nice and brown on one side, nice and white on the other side. That's two different levels of flavor with one little piece of vegetable. Only cause we are finessing the food. That's all I gotta do. 
Now everything's ready, we're gonna take it off the heat. We're gonna put it into a uh, container that has a towel, in fact, so we can absorb as much moisture as possible. Um, now we're gonna scrape it out into a container that has some sort of absorbent material, i.e. a paper towel, and we're gonna let it sit. There's a lot of water that's gonna come out of the spinach, and we don't want that to go into the soup. It's gonna be like gross brown green water. We don't need that. So we're gonna let it rest here for a second in the bowl that has a paper towel. It's gonna to absorb moisture. Then we're gonna mix it with our red peppers, and that's gonna be our garnish. Before we mix everything up, we wanna give it a rough chop. Remember, these are still leaves, all right? They're still big and kind of awkward in size. We wanna chop it up so it will uh, incorporate the bell peppers as much as possible. We're just gonna dump it right out onto the cutting board. This is gonna go into our bowl. We're gonna mix it up with bell peppers. Boom, our garnish is ready. Uh, so our beautiful bell pepper uh, brunoise garnish that we made, we're just gonna mix it in with the spinach. We're going to re-season. We're gonna hit with a little bit of olive oil. All right, so what we have here clearly is a bunch of different colors in our in our appetizer here. Um, we got a white soup going, we have an orange soup going, we have green, we have red, all natural, all right? Nothing has been added, nothing has been manipulated. All we're doing is changing the actual, uh, you know, structural integrity of each vegetable. That being said, when we see it at the end point, you're gonna see an array of colors that should be the most appetizing thing about all of it. The fact that it's only vegetables, the fact that it's going to be super delicious and the fact that it, you know, could emulate the rainbow. All right, so we're ready to blend. Everything has been uh, simmering for about 25-30 minutes now. Uh, the way that you know that it's ready to blend is A, the onions are clear and translucent, and B, everything else you can just push through it with the spoon. That's where we're at with everything. Now I'm going to bring the pots over, we're going to put it on the countertop here on top of a towel, all right? Last thing anybody wants to do is be melting their countertop, right? Done that a couple times. Most of the broth, I got a little bit more in the pot over there. Uh, we're gonna move it over, we're gonna blend. Super important. Cover it and put your hand on it. So whenever you're blending, always start from the lowest power point first, all right? Turn it on low and bring it up high, especially if what's in here is hot. I've got another pot that we're gonna transfer the rest of this into here. All right, so remember we didn't, you know, I wasn't able to fit everything into this, into the blender here, so I got another, another sauce pot here. We're just gonna reserve the rest of this. And in fact, I'm gonna keep a little bit still in the blender. The rest, right in. All right, so all we're gonna do is combine all of our soup back into the same pot that we were cooking it in, right? That was batch one. It was batch two. All right, we've got a beautiful carrot and sweet potato soup. We're gonna rinse out our blender. Next, we're gonna do our white soup, the parsnip and cauliflower soup. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing to our cauliflower and parsnip soup. So, as we did before, cover it, start on low. All right, so we just blended right back into the pot. Time to final taste, season, adjust for consistency if need be, we're ready to plate. All right, so we got our soups ready to go. We're ready to plate, all right? We got our garnish that we've done. We've got both of our soups, everything seasoned, everything tastes delicious, everything looks delicious. Last thing we're gonna do is get our garnish for our soup actually ready, all right? Remember we have our brunoise and our spinach, okay? 
What I got here is two small biscuit cutters, and they're on top of a tart pan bottom, and that's because there's no ledge, all right? We're just gonna be able to slide this right up, and you'll see why it is that we're doing it this way, all right? So I'm gonna build a little tower with our spinach and our red pepper. So we've got everything ready to go. We made our little garnish towers of uh, spinach and roasted pepper. We've got our two soups ready to go. Now it's time to plate, all right? Watch this super intricate plating presentation technique. Keep everything stirring, keep everything nicey nice. All right, we got two ladles, all right? Textures are about the same here. We're gonna come up, we're gonna go right in at the same time. We're gonna do it again over here. We're gonna give it a nice little stir. We're gonna come up. Same time. All right, here we go. We gotta swirl it. Start drawing yourself little circles. We're starting to mix it together. We're gonna stop right there. And do the same thing over here. Maybe we might get lucky and get an actual yin yang here. There we go. Now, because we were using our, the base here, we're just gonna slide this right in. And that is our parsnip and carrot soup, garnished with spinach, red pepper, caramelized garlic, completely delicious, completely vegan, ready to go. All right, so here we are. We're preparing our entree, all right? Our entree is gonna be steamed protein with an array of different vegetables and garnishes and flavors. Our proteins are going to be a choice of either halibut or chicken breast, because as we know, personal chef, you're supposed to personalize. Not everybody likes a piece of fish. They don't want a piece of fish, we're gonna have a beautiful piece of chicken for them, ready to go. All right, so we got halibut. I'm gonna take the skin off, all right? First thing I'm gonna do, oh, look at that. We already got a little lip right there, so we don't even have to make one, all right? I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna use the weight of my hand and the sharpness of the knife to just press on right through, all right? Oftentimes you're gonna find at a uh, fish market that they will sell you the fish with the skin. Something wrong with that. The skin's delicious. Perhaps on the halibut, don't need it though. All right, so this is a big piece of halibut. I'm gonna slice it right about there. All right. And this is gonna be our halibut portion. Okay. Next with our chicken. Chicken breast looks pretty good. There's nothing really to do with it. We're gonna clean off some of the fat. We don't really need it. If it looks a little funky afterwards, after we cook it, we can always clean it up then too. But we don't really need to do anything with this. All right, so our proteins are ready. What we need to get ready first is our steaming uh, solution for our proteins. Remember, we saved our pot of everything from uh, the appetizer. This is gonna go right in a sauce pot along with some water, some peppercorns. We're gonna bring it to a simmer. Our pot with our vegetable scraps, high heat. We're gonna bring it up to a simmer. We wanna create something that smells fantastic. Remember I was talking before about all that aroma that's gonna be evaporating and we wanna keep that in the dish. First vegetable garnish that we're gonna make, roasted cauliflower, all right? Remember when we were taking off these beautiful little bulbs? We're gonna continue that with our paring knife, all right? We're gonna roast these, so we want them to stand up straight, all right? So I'm gonna trim off the bottom here. All right, so that's good. We're gonna go through all of them just like that. We're gonna slice so we can make sure that they're gonna stand nice and even when we roast. We're gonna do that to the rest of our head of cauliflower. Okay, so all the little cauliflower heads that we just made, I'm gonna toss them into a bowl here. I'm gonna lay them out methodically. I'm gonna drizzle with olive oil, all right? 
cauliflower is gonna absorb a ton of this. So it's okay to be liberal in the sense of adding olive oil. All right, looks like it disappeared. It sucked it all right in. Okay, next, big fan of dried herbs. All right, dried herbs everywhere. That's one of those rules that people don't really know unless you went to uh, you know, some kind of classic old school culinary school. Um, always start with dry herbs, always end with fresh herbs. Sheet pan, we're going to put our cauliflower straight on. We're gonna leave plenty of space. We have our oven at 400 degrees convection. We want a lot of air blowing through there. We want a lot of space in here. It's gonna get nice and brown and roasty everywhere. This is going right in the oven. Uh, one of the aspects of this dish we're gonna make here, we have a chickpea puree, all right? We've got some chickpeas, just canned, no sodium added, store-bought brand. We're gonna add a little bit of shallot. Remember all the flavor adding ingredients that we talked about before? We're gonna add a little celery. Don't forget to slice it nice and thin. Hit it with some black pepper. And a good amount of olive oil. This is going to create an interesting texture at the end when we blend everything together. It's gonna to make it much more silky and delicious. Throwing it right on the stove, high heat. Get everything soft, just like we made the last soup. Tool tray always should have awesome tools on it. This is a number 10 melon baller. It's gonna make little pearls. This is gonna be one of our vegetable garnishes. We're gonna make little zucchini pearls. So we're gonna spend mm, sometimes an annoying amount of time doing this sort of thing, but at the end, it will be well worth it. All right, we're gonna push in a little bit. I'm just gonna pull it right out. The other thing that we're also doing is prepping zucchini for the next pureed vegetable soup that we make. The order in which we're doing this, yes, this is gonna take a while here to do this zucchini, but all the other stuff that's gonna take a while has already started. The uh, cauliflower in the oven, 400 degrees, about 20 minutes. I'm just gonna continue doing that to the whole thing, and we'll come back in a second for this. Sometimes your food isn't what you want it to be. I wanted to make a mint vinaigrette. I'm not really going to garnish with this kind of mint, but what I can guarantee you is that there's still a ton of mint flavor in here. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, um, I picked up a couple leaves here. I'm gonna rub it in our hands. I'm gonna wilt it. I'm gonna let out some of these oils, all right? That's gonna go right in our little container here. We're gonna squeeze some lemon juice. Get rid of the seeds. All right, so our mint leaves sitting in this lemon juice. 15 minutes later, this is gonna be minty lemon water. It's gonna be delicious. And in fact, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil as well. And just the fact that we smashed up that mint and we're gonna let it sit in here, the liquid that's in there is gonna be fantastically delicious. And we will end up garnishing later with some chopped parsley. And let's see, well, we got a half a lemon that we're not gonna really use. So I'm gonna throw it into our steaming mixture. One of the awesome things about parsley is that the stem has more flavor than anything else. We're gonna pull the leaves off. All right. Crack them, open them up a little bit. Give it some avenue to release flavor. And in our sauce pot it goes. Now, I do have to say that basically is a pot filled with vegetable scrap that a lot of people would have thrown into the trash, but it smells delicious. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna start steaming our protein in there. Protein's gonna absorb all that flavor. It's gonna be fantastic. 
In fact, it's telling us it's ready to go. So now's the time. Awesome bamboo steamer. All this vapor aroma is gonna absorb into our proteins. First down is chicken. We're gonna give it a little spray just to make sure nothing sticks. A couple chicken pieces. This will steam up for about 10 minutes. On top of that, halibut. Almost forgot to spray. That would have been a mess. Covering it up and let it go. All right, so we're going to finish with our parsley garnish just real quick. We're gonna do a quick little chop. Honestly, we're just waiting for the food to tell us that it's ready to go. All right, so we're just gonna finish up the zucchini. Zucchini is a soft vegetable, all right? See, awesome. But we're not gonna throw this whole thing away. We're gonna save this for later for soup. Uh, zucchini is soft. All you gotta do is warm it all the way through in order for it to be cooked. So this is gonna go into a small saucepan with a little bit of olive oil. I just put a little bit of olive oil into the zucchini. Uh, we've got the zucchini pearls on low heat. Those are just gonna roll around in the olive oil, get a little soft. Okay, so everything's been going back here for a little bit. Uh, we're gonna check it out, see how we're looking. We're gonna open up the oven first. I got glasses, so keep your face away because I wanna be able to see. I don't wanna get all foggy. They look great, but they also look that they're dark on one side. So this oven might need a little help, so I'm gonna twist it around on the inside. Next, chickpeas. Where are you guys at? Onions are still a little firm. Remember, onions need to be soft and translucent. They're not yet, so it's not ready. Our little zucchini pearls, they actually look great. You know what I just did? I splashed a little bit of water in there. You guys weren't watching, but I had to put a little water in there because it was getting a little sticky. That's all you gotta do. These things are ready to go. All right, let's see what's up with this guy. Looking good? Yeah. You know what it also looks like? A plain white piece of fish. Doesn't really look that appetizing to me. So, you know what I think? I think we should kind of wing it a little bit and make something a little extra to add to this. Meanwhile, cauliflower is ready. Gotta take the cauliflower out of the pan. All right, so I'm gonna kind of wing it here a little bit. We're gonna make some persiad to garnish that, uh, to garnish that fish. All right, so we need some olive oil. We need some smashed garlic, we need breadcrumb, we need parsley, we need lemon. We're gonna go with the olive oil first. All right, that's gonna go right into our saute pan. We're gonna get it warm. When I say get it warm, we're gonna leave our olive oil on low heat. We're gonna do the same thing that we did before to peel it. Just gonna crack it open. So we're gonna chop fine. We're gonna slide it around. We're gonna chop again. We're gonna move it around. We're gonna chop again. We're gonna start to smash the garlic as much as we can. We wanna turn it into almost a raw garlic puree. All right, so as we continue doing this, it's getting softer and softer and finer and finer. Okay, so there's all our garlic. We're gonna use our parsley. We've got breadcrumbs. Zest some lemon also. Olive oil is warm, all right? Don't ever get it hot. You don't ever want to do that. Why? Because olive oil is made to be cold. All right, so we're gonna move this around. 
translucent garlic immediately. Awesome, awesome, awesome garlic flavored oil right away. Chopped parsley, right in. Bunch of lemon zest. That's our next step. All right, so here we go. We got lemon, we got garlic, we got olive oil, we got parsley. Breadcrumbs are next. Now, this needs to be mixed up. All right, there we go. That's what we want. Looks like wet sand. All right, this is gonna stay on the side until we're ready to go. Next thing we're gonna do is address our cauliflower garnish. If we can see our cauliflower, how it came out. All right, nice and roasty. In a hot oven, it's gonna get caramelized and soft on the outside. The inside is still gonna stay nice and white. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna slice. We're gonna slice so we can have color everywhere. This is one of my favorite things to make ever from a personal culinary hero of mine, Mr. Charlie Trotter. Our chickpea puree is ready to go. I've got a stick blender. We're just gonna put it right in there, puree it till smooth. All right, we still got a little bit of liquid in there. You know what? I'm gonna take some of that liquid out just to make sure it's not too soupy when we make our puree. If it needs a little bit of moisture after we puree, then I'll add it back in and it'll work out fine. All right, so we're all blended. Looking pretty good. We're nice and seasoned. What I do like about this is the color, all right? I like the color because it's just one straight color. Chickpeas are gonna go right down, right in the center. With my Peltex, fish is coming out of the steamer. I wanna be gentle with your food. Treat it with finesse, treat it with love, all right? Our nice piece of fish is gonna go right on. You remember our mint vinaigrette? Well, it's still mint vinaigrette. We've got tremendous mint flavor in here. Tremendous. All right, we're gonna get this all over the fish. Next, we have our zucchini. Our zucchini pearls. I'm gonna try to get them right in one nice little corner right here. All right, nice little corner. And then last but not least, our persiage. Give it a little fold, give it a little toss. Gently dust. So here we are, this is our finalized dish. One of the fun things about being a personal chef, you can kind of do whatever you want, so long as it works out and so long as it you know, is eaten and enjoyed. Uh, to me, I'm looking at this, Pretty good, I'd be into that. Uh, you know what I'd like to do next time? Maybe I might add a roasted tomato, uh, maybe some bell pepper garnish, uh, maybe some radish that I could like pickle and some rice wine vinegar. That'd be fun. Uh, but as is, it's gonna be actually stupendously phenomenal. Um, and we're ready to go. All right, it's time for dessert. Uh, one of the interesting things about dessert, it always shows up a lot faster than you think it was gonna be. So I implore all of you to make sure that your dessert is always prepared before you even start dinner. Um, that being said, I've got a couple little things here to show you that will help us uh, move quickly through dessert. Uh, what we're gonna make is a roasted pear. We're gonna marinate it with port wine. We are going to stuff it with a little bit of seasoned, sweet and delicious mascarpone cheese. We've got a cookie crumble and we've got pistachio sauce. So here we go. First, we're gonna make our marinade for the pears. We've got port wine. 
We are also going to, oh, you remember this? Remember this like wimpy mint? Uh, we're gonna put some of this in there. We're gonna do the same thing that we did with the vinaigrette earlier. You know, remember just cause it's not in good quality doesn't mean we didn't pay for it. So if we can still do something with it, let's do that. We're gonna take our mint, we're gonna smash it. We're gonna throw it in. We have honey. I don't know, what was that? About three tablespoons, probably a little bit more. We have a cinnamon stick. That's gonna go in. Cardamom. It's a delicious flavor that you don't really see too often, except in Turkish coffee, of all places. We're gonna give a little dash in there. All right. We're going to slice and juice some of this orange. Just rough cuts. All we're doing is uh, taking some flavor out. All right, so that's gonna go in there and that's gonna sit. All right, we're gonna use the rest of that later. Let's get some lemon. Same thing. Slice and squeeze, okay? So all these pieces of food that we've just put in there, we're not gonna eat any of that, all right? You don't have to really worry about, you know, the dicing or the, 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 the presentation of it. Vanilla bean is going in there. We're gonna put some vanilla bean in our mascarpone and also in our marinade. So what we're gonna do, peel the vanilla bean right down the middle. Pardon me, slice it right down the middle. We're gonna open it up, scrape out some of the beans it's gonna go into the mascarpone. Okay, that's going in there. All right, let's mash it all up. Let's get this all flavored and seasoned and delicious, all right? Because this is going to be for our pears, all right? This whole thing in here. Our pears need to absorb all of this. So we're using the whisk to kind of bruise up the, uh, the citrus. You know what this looks like? This looks like sangria. And peel our pear. Remember when I was talking about peelers earlier? Definitely use a peeler on a pear. They're way too delicate to use a knife. <clears throat> all right, so we peeled our pear. We gotta take out the core, all right? Knife skills. This is where they're gonna come in handy. We're just stabbing the pear at an angle so that we can get out not only the base, but the seeds that are in the center. All right, eh, there's a little bit in there. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna split it in half and we're gonna roast it. And we're gonna um, present the cheese like on the top on a little scoop. So I'm gonna slice straight down. All right, and now this is gonna soak in this mixture. So remember when I told you to make sure that your dessert is ready before you even start dinner, that you should have done yesterday for tonight's dinner. That way, it would have actually softened in its own juice. So we're just gonna keep on moving. We're gonna do a little garnish here. We're gonna use some orange segments for our dessert. And to do that, I'm gonna take off the top here. I'm gonna peel off the sides. This is where your knife skills will always come into play. When you can do something like this and add garnish like this to any dish, people will always love it. So if you're an aspiring personal chef, trust me, your knife skills are key. So here we have orange flesh that is not encumbered by anything. Remember our mint? I'm gonna smash it and roll it around in there. Start adding some mint flavor to the orange. We're not gonna serve it, but it's going to accentuate what's going on in there. We're like marinating the fruit in mint. That's what we're doing here. Next step is our mascarpone cheese. We have a little bit of vanilla. We have a little bit of orange. I personally don't think we need any sweetener in here. 
but at the same time, it's always good to have a little bit of that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little bit of that honey and the honey is gonna go in. We got some lemon juice over there. We're gonna squeeze some lemon juice. There's a whole bunch of talk out there these days about phrases such as salt, fat, acid, and heat. You know what those all do? Those all bounce off of each other. You know what else bounces off each other? Sweet and sour. We all know that. So I just added a little bit of honey. Let's put a little bit of lemon juice in there. Only a little bit. All right, sweet mascarpone cheese. Here we go. Everything is ready for that, all right? We're gonna baste our pears again. Let's throw them in the oven and let's roast them. Ready to do that? All right, so we have cookie garnish. One of those things that people, I don't know, everybody knows it as soon as you taste it, uh, but nobody ever thinks about it. A Little bit of cookie crust, but use it for garnish on a dish. So we got some vanilla Oreo style cookies here. I mean, granted, that's a lot. We're not gonna use that whole thing for the dessert, but it's good to have laying around. While our pear is in the oven, we're gonna start our plate, all right? So we're gonna start putting down and we're gonna smash it a little bit. We wanna try to build up a pile because when the pear gets down there, the pear is gonna smash it a little bit too, all right? So here's our little pedestal for our pear, okay? We've got our orange garnish. We've got our mascarpone that's gonna go in the center. We have a mint leaf that we were able to bring back to life with a little bit of ice water. So you remember that mint that was all soft? Put it in some ice water and about an hour later, there you go. We're gonna check out our pear in the oven now. All right, so our pears were marinated in port wine and honey. I just pulled it out of the oven. It's been in the oven for about 25 minutes. Um, they soaked in a lot of the flavor. They got a little crusty and caramelized on the outside. Now we're gonna garnish with a little bit of our mascarpone cheese. It's gonna make kind of a sloppy canal here. Canal's gonna go right on top. All right, you see it's already starting to melt a little bit, so we gotta move quick. All right, we're gonna add a couple pieces of orange. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put an orange up here, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And one up there. See, don't let the food tell you what's going on. You get to be the boss of the food. All right, pistachio sauce. Hey, you guys wanna hear something? You ever need a quick fix for dessert? Melt some ice cream and pour it over some fruit and tell everyone it's vanilla sauce. Pistachio sauce. All right, here we go. So that's basically it, all right? Got a nice little mint garnish. All right, we got a lot of sauce. That's gonna float around. It's gonna be picked up by the cookie and uh, the pear itself is gonna melt all in. We've got a bunch of different flavors, a bunch of different textures, fruit heavy, not a lot of sugar. All right, everybody, I'm Chef Kelly. Thank you very much for being here today. I've had a lot of fun creating these dishes for you. We've had a carrot and parsnip soup. We've had steamed halibut with persiad and chickpeas. And our dessert was an awesome roasted pear with mascarpone cheese and pistachio sauce. Uh, thank you for everyone for being here. It's been absolutely my pleasure to make sure that everyone understands a little bit more the core of fine dining. Uh, check me out at chefkellysheehan.com. Also Chef Kelly Sheehan on Instagram. Look for me on Facebook also. Check us out also next time in our next episode, we're gonna have a beautiful roasted pork. I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite things called forbidden rice. We'll have an appetizer that is uh, goat cheese along with beets. And also for dessert, a Linzer tort. Linzer tort, it's like my favorite thing ever. I'm super excited to show you guys how to make that with a fine dining twist. See you next time.